And 24 Hour News 8's Ken Kolker is here with the story. And we the last three minutes of the deadly flight were captured by a dash cam in a nearby vehicle. As you can see, the video shows the Boeing 747 cargo plane taking off from Bagram Air Force Base and stalling before rolling. It crashed in a ball of fire. Not long after the April crash, the Taliban claimed responsibility, but NATO quickly ruled that out. Now, according to published reports, the country's Ministry of Transport and Civil Aviation today released its findings that heavy military vehicles being carried by the aircraft broke free in mid-air. Investigators say it appears the armored vehicles weighing up to 18 tons slid to the back of the plane, causing the National Ergo plane to crash. What's not clear is what caused the load to shift. However, investigators reportedly found broken buckles that were supposed to have held the vehicles in place. Here's a song that will get your heart rate up. Every time I sing the word up, reach for the stars. Every time I sing the word down, touch the ground. How will the River rest of the time march with your knees high? Those magnificent Street. men in their flying machines, they Emily. go up, 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 they go down, 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 down. They enchant all the ladies and see all the scenes with their up to the up, 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 and Lake. they down, 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 up, and Inland down, Lake. flying around. Howell Lake, Cranberry Lake, Luke is Liam and Lake, Howell and River and Dale, Georgia Strait, Malaspina Strait, Horton Airport, Vermont Airport and Air Force Base. Texada Island Airport. So many places to land in amphibian. They can fly upside down with their feet in the air. They don't think of danger. They really don't care. Uh -uh. Newton would think he... So here we go. Final push. I know all these videos I've been doing this year. I, I, you know, I'm aiming towards getting the plane uh, certified. And everything has been a push. But yesterday, one of my hangar mates here, a fellow pilot, also happens to be a helicopter AME, uh, aviation mechanic, told me that he's arranging to have some proper weighing scales for doing a plate, plane's weight and balance. He's arranged for them to be here tomorrow because they're going to weigh the club plane over there, the Cessna 172F over there, that just got the new blue and yellow and white livery done. They have to, because they added the paint, adds pounds, they gotta do the weight and balance. And for that, they need the proper scales. Well, he's offered to help me do mine. So that was yesterday. And up until now, I keep thinking that the, this weight and balance is weeks away. But when he told me yesterday, get ready for tomorrow, which is two days, I, I realized how close I am to the end. So today, Elaine came up and helped me put the the window in on the cabin on the other side on the turtle deck and now all I have to do is fix the windscreen in place fix the hull uh, together here the bow deck to the hull um, put the ceiling strip on here and on here put the canopy sliding glass in or sliding Lexan in those pieces are already assembled they just got to be mounted I got to put the beautiful sea ray seats cushions in um, and then that's kind of the basic structure of the plane but when you weigh the plane empty there's still some things that you got to include and these are the things that stay with the plane always so things like a tool kit a safety kit of some sort survival kit a first aid kit those I all have down at the house and I'll bring up tomorrow but also since a seaplane is also a boat you need some emergency paddles which will go in there in the luggage compartment. I got a 50 feet of a throwing rope in the event that, uh, you know, I'm kind of drifting away from a dock and I got to throw a rope or something like that. Or someone's in the water, I got to throw a rope to them. I got uh, two mooring lines. Those will always be in, in the plane in the event I'm tying up to something. And then um, I've got this, <laughs> which is the, the holder which we kind of permanently mounted off the dash. And this is for my uh, little iPad. And then, yeah, I'm a sailor at heart. And so I actually like this part. Some pilots might say, you're crazy. But I got a little anchor, a little folding dinghy anchor with a little bit of chain. And I think I got 30 feet of floating rope here. And this will go up in the bow compartment, not just as an anchor, but as a possible ballast, because I think when I'm flying by myself and there's not much weight, 
I might need to ballast the front end down. Uh, we'll see. That'll just be found out during the test pilot phase. So I gotta do those things with the, the windows, the canopy, the seat covers, and in, uh, put in this uh, critical equipment that's always in the boat. Then I have to empty the tank. Because the last thing I did with fuel was I filled the whole tank up to calibrate the tank with the Dynon uh, flight management system. So now it's full. But to do this weight and balance, you have to empty all the fuel out. So I've got all my jerry cans here. I'll have to empty all that out. And that's about it. So uh, let's get this done. In a flurry of activity to get ready for the weight and balance today, I put on the vinyl seal strip between the, the hull and the turtle deck and the hull and the bow deck. Also between the bow deck and the windscreen. After securing the bow deck and the windscreen in place with the rivets, of course. Yeah, I got in the nice seats. Beautiful. Nice sea ray seats. A bunch of safety equipment. Uh, survival kit, first aid kit, paddles, uh, pilot's operating handbook, yeah, the ELT, these things stay with the plane so they have to be weighed with the plane. Instrumentation is all in place. Yeah, now I just got to empty all the fuel, all 83 gallons of fuel out of the plane and she'll be ready for her weighing exercise okay the two guys from the club are getting ready to weigh the club plane there they had to fly over to uh, Campbell River Airport and borrow the proper certified scales from uh, flight school over there I believe and here in the hangar X we're still unloading fuel from the Spirit of Mackenzie. I've kind of run out of jerry cans, so I'm putting this expensive 91 octane premium fuel into my Ford Flex. My youngest son there, Sebastian, says his car is thirsty just outside the gate. He wants to put some in there. Back here, Miguel is standing by holding the smart end of the fuel hose. handsome couple of hangar rats stealing all the fuel out of my plane. You almost there, you guys? You almost finished? No, we got, we got eight liters left. Just enough to fuel up your car, eh? Okay. Just getting set up here. The um, plane was facing west-east before, but they couldn't get it level. So now they've turned it 90 degrees and it's facing due south. Getting set up before they push it onto the scales. So the Spirit of Mackenzie is ready to weigh, waiting her turn in line. So the fuel is all out. We only have unusable fuel in the tank. The oil and coolant have been topped up. There's a small dinghy anchor in the bow with some chain and rope, which I'll put on the uh, list of extra equipment as part of the weight and balance report. In the plane itself, for extra equipment, I got the fire extinguisher, the ELT, two paddles, two mooring ropes, a throwing rope, and a bag with some uh, tools, survival equipment, and first aid equipment in it. Also, I'll list on the extra equipment list each of the electronic devices. And yeah, she's looking good. The end is really in sight now. Well, that was great. So, the spirit of Mackenzie has now been weighed. Uh, we put her on the scales once the guys were finished with uh, weighing the club plane. Uh, interestingly, uh, Jordan, who was manning the uh, scale readout, the digital readout on the, on the box, uh, asked us, make a guess what we thought the plane would weigh uh, and me having access to a, a pilot's operating handbook which I'd purchased from Progressive Aerodyne and in which it stated that the empty weight of the plane would be 850 pounds I thought I was gonna win the lottery already knowing the numbers before the draw took place so 850 pounds I said 
Oh, Jordan said, not even close. 980 pounds. What? 130 pounds? Overweight? I, okay, whatever. I had to accept it because these are certified scales. Jordan knew what he was doing. He followed all the correct procedures. and Well, 980 pounds it was. So I was able to fill in uh, the table uh, on the forms I have from uh, the MDRA, the Minister's Delegate for uh, Transport Canada, uh, with the main wheel weight and the uh, tail wheel weight. Well, I just got interrupted when uh, two gentlemen came walking down Hangar Alley here, and it turns out uh, that one of the gentlemen, the elderly gentleman, Dave, was the designer, the designer of that plane over there, the Skylark, which went into production some decades ago. He was a university professor, I think, at Calgary, aer uh, aeronautical engineer, designed that plane. Apparently, he also, I think, still holds some world records in glider flying in uh, North America. But anyway, uh, Dave was here this morning. I haven't seen him around for a little while. But he was here with a fellow named Nick, who was up here from Sacramento, California, who apparently has the license to build, or at least sell, probably build, uh, the Skylark, and owns his own Skylark. Uh, anyway, I had a very interesting conversation with both Dave and Nick. Uh, so that interrupted where I was. And then just as they were leaving, it started raining. So. Uh, let me just carry on with what I was talking about uh, to do with the weight and balance. So we got the weighing done. And then what you need to know is the uh, lever arm, the distance from the datum, which is the nose of the plane, the distance of each of the weights that you load into the plane uh, from the datum. Because the weight times the lever arm, the distance, gives you a moment. And uh, by adding up all the moments uh, and dividing by the total weight, you then find out where the center of gravity of the loaded plane is. And that's really important. Because uh, as you load the plane differently, the center of gravity is going to move around. And the important thing is to keep that center of gravity between a forward limit and an aft limit. And the forward and aft limits are established by the plane designer. And that's where I had some confusion. So not only did I, was I confused about the initial empty weight, not 850 pounds, 980 pounds is more appropriate, but that brought up the question of what about the forward and aft limits? Are they different? Because the ones I was looking at were the ones for the 850 pound lighter version of the plane. Uh, so what I did is I went online, uh, and online of course you're going to find crap, or you're going to find really good stuff. In this case I found some really good stuff the pilot operating handbook for the factory version uh, that they started producing sometime around 2010 or thereabouts, the LSA adventurer model, which is the direct equivalent of this Sea Ray LSX, which denotes the home built version. So now I have the uh, proper uh, dimensions to use for the lever arms, for the main gear and the tail wheel which I am checking today just to make sure that what's in that most recent version of the pilot operating handbook that I have is correct. And it is. So that's what I've done here with my verticals and my tape measure and my lines on my tarp and my right angles, uh the triangle rulers. I've established what my lever arms are. Now some of the lever arms I can't really measure. Just for instance, the passenger and pilot where when I'm sitting down is my center of gravity. You know, when I'm sitting down, it's not at the front, not at the knees, it's not at the back, it's not right in the dimensional middle, my lap, because most of my weight is up here. So uh, I don't know where to measure for the pilot passenger, so that, so in that case, for that measurement, I go by the pilot's operating handbook, the light one. And the same thing for the fuel in the engine. You, you can't measure where they are. Uh, only the, I guess, the factory or the designer could do that, so I have to go by the book there. Anyway, so now I've got the weight, I've got the lever arms established, and now at home I'm going to calculate uh, all the different weight and balance 
scenarios that the plane might go through. And in the pilot's operating handbook, they're very good there. They give uh, eight likely scenarios, between, ranging from a very light pilot with no passenger, and no, and no fuel, and no baggage, right up to a passenger and a pilot, uh, full baggage, full fuel, of course not exceeding the gross uh, takeoff weight of 1,500 pounds for this plane. And so I'll run through all those scenarios. And that has to go into a report to the uh, Transport Canada's representative as I uh, hint of uh, having an inspector come to the site and do the, uh, the certificate of uh, airworthiness uh, process. So there you go. Raining. Really getting down to the short strokes now. One of the last tasks I have to do before my uh, inspection to get the certificate of airworthiness is I gotta secure the properly engraved Canadian aircraft identification plate onto some player someplace conspicuous for the pilot when they get into the plane. Now the Sea Ray manual says to put it way out at the end of the tail boom, which I don't think makes a whole lot of sense. I'm gonna put it right here, secure it to this pylon so the pilot can't miss it, um, or anybody else in this area can't miss it. Um, it's a stainless steel plate. It's different than the, the one the Americans use and the one that was sent to me uh, by the aircraft, uh, Experimental Aircraft Association. Uh, but anyway, it's the plate I have. I've just got it engraved. It's got my name on it. It's got the aircraft, aircraft model, Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray LSX. Serial number one uh, Lima Kilo six zero zero Charlie. So I'm going to secure that here with some some rivets. Put a little bit of masking tape on the back there. And I put a line on here already exactly where I want it. I have to be really careful uh, that um, there's a lot of wiring going up into here. But and uh, there's also the pylon um, structure, a uh, big two. 2 inch by 2 inch, 1 and a half inch by 1 and a half inch aluminum tube here. So this is, that's good uh, for this one and this one, uh, just be careful I don't go too far in there because there is wiring in behind there. Okay. Up and down, flying around, loop in the loop and defying the ground. Up and down, they're frightfully keen, those magnificent men in their flying machines. They can fly upside down with their feet in the air. They don't think of danger. Now that the name plate or aircraft identification plate is affixed to the airplane, I have to, I can now take a picture of it that will accompany my application for registration of the plane. Now, I've already gotten the marks on it. That was a separate application for marks that didn't get it registered. Now that the plane is ready for its inspection, when the inspector comes, I've got to give him my registration. And that registration requires me to apply for it. And to apply for it, I've got to have a picture of this nameplate. That's all, folks.